Jones. No, I would just like to say to Your Honor that I am, uh, I am not suicidal. That's what I would like to say. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. Right. Yeah. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this, and I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself, and you must all know that. Jesse Smollett era un actor y cantante estadounidense conocido principalmente por su participación en la serie Empire, pero en el año 2019 se hizo muy infame por fingir un delito de odio para ganar popularidad. El 29 de enero de 2019, Jesse llamó a la policía de Chicago para denunciar una agresión que sufrió aquella madrugada. La noticia le dio la vuelta al mundo, y desde un inicio habían personas que dudaban de las palabras de Smollett pero también existían activistas y compañeros de profesión que defendieron públicamente a Jesse, como fue el caso de Ellen Page. We have a media that's saying it's a debate whether or not what just happened to Jesse Smollett is a hate crime. It's absurd. This isn't a debate. I agree. I agree. Is it that has you so angry? Is it the the attackers? It's the is attackers, it... but it's also the attacks. It's like, you know, at first it was a thing of like, listen, if I tell the truth, then that's it, because it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Then it became a thing of like, oh, how can you doubt that? Like, how do you how do you not believe that? It's the truth. And then it became a thing of like, oh. It's not necessarily that you don't believe that this is the truth. You don't even want to see the truth. What happened that night, Jesse? When I landed in Chicago and Frank Gatson, who's like my uncle, and he's also my creative director, and he picked me up. And then we got back to the apartment. There was no food. And so I went out to Walgreens thinking that they were 24 hours and to have a smoke. <laughs> uh, Walgreens was closed. Um, So I called him up and I said, hey, I'm going to run to Subway, which was across the street, and I'm going to get a salad. Do you want anything? I went to the Subway and got the order. During that time, I texted my manager, thinking that he was still in Australia, because he was on an Australian tour with one of his other clients. Mm -hmm. And I said, yo, call me when you can. He called me immediately. And while he was on the phone, I uh, heard, as I was crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. And I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> My name ain't Empire. Uh, and I didn't answer. I kept walking and then I heard Empire. And so I turned around and I said, the did you just say to me? And then I see the uh, attacker uh, masked. And he said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. So I punched his ass back. And then um, we started tussling, you know, it was very icy and we ended up tussling by the stairs, uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. There was a second person involved who was kicking me in my back, and uh, then it just stopped. And they ran off, and I saw where they ran. And the phone was in my pocket, but it had fallen out, and it was sitting there, and my manager was still on the phone. So I picked up the phone, and I said, Brandon, and he's like, what's going on? And I said, I was just jumped. And I then I looked down and I see that there's a rope around my neck, which I hadn't You hadn't noticed that, it before? No, you didn't because see? it was so fast. You know what I'm saying? It was so fast. How long did this all It felt take like minutes, but it probably was like 30 seconds, honestly. I can't tell you, honestly. Um, I noticed the rope around my neck and I started screaming. And I said, there's a rope around my neck. Why did you hesitate to want to call the police? You know, There's a level of pride there. We live in a society where, as a gay man, you are considered somehow to be weak. And I'm not weak. I am not weak. And we, are, as a people, are not weak. 
So, I mean, I can accept that there was pride there. There's also privacy, you know, at the end of the day, look what has happened, you know, look what has happened. So I don't, I'm glad that Frank called the police. I'm glad that we reported it. Um, during that time before they came, it took them about maybe half hour to come. And during that time, I was looking at myself, just like checking myself out. I saw the bruise on my neck, you know, like the little, um, the rope burn around my neck. And then I, but I smelled bleach. I know the smell of bleach. And I saw on my sweatshirt, it had marks on it, like spots on it, when you have a bad bleach job. So then I was like, there's bleach on me too. So when the police came, um, I kept the clothes on. I kept the rope. So on. you had the rope on the entire time? I mean, it wasn't like wrapped around, but yeah, it was around because I wanted them to see. I wanted them to see what this was. What other ones I, had you heard that were inaccurate? That I had said that they were wearing MAGA hats. I never said that. I didn't need to add anything like that. They called me a They called me a There's no which way you cut it. I don't need some MAGA hat as the cherry on top of some racist Sunday. What were your, I, your injuries? What were um, they did x-rays. I didn't have, it was reported that I had like fractured ribs or cracked ribs or something like that. That wasn't true. I was just in a lot of pain. You know, my clavicle was messed up. My rib was, um, was bruised, but I wasn't, nothing was cracked. Like I walked into the hospital. I walked out of the hospital. Why do you think you were targeted? I can just assume, I mean, I come really, really hard against 45. I come really, really hard against his administration. And I don't hold my tongue. And there is no doubt in your mind what motivated this attack. I could only go off of their words. I mean, who says empire this MAGA country ties a noose around your neck and pours bleach on you. And this is just a friendly fight. Do you think there's a link between the letter and the attack? Um, and you did mention it to the police right away absolutely. about the letter. Absolutely. Um, just because on the letter, it had a stick figure hanging from a tree with a gun pointing towards it, with the words that said, Smollett Jussie, you will die black There was no address, but the return address said in big red, you know, like cat. MAGA. Did I make that up too? I want that video found so badly because for probably four reasons. Number one, I want them to find the people that did it. Number two, I want them to stop being able to say alleged attack. Number three, I want them to see that I fought back. And I want a little gay boy who might watch this to see that I fought back. And it does not take anything away from people that are not able to do that. But I fought back. They ran off. I didn't. What do you say to a young gay man, a young gay person? To learn to fight. And I don't just mean like learn to fight. I mean, learn to fight. Learn to be a fighter. I am not advocating violence at all. So let's be clear about that. If you're gonna die, fight until you do. Because if you don't fight, you have no chance. I have fought for love. I'm an advocate. I respect too much the people who I am now one of those people who have been attacked in any way. You do such a disservice when you lie about things like this. Las circunstancias del caso eran bastante extrañas y todo parecía ser muy conveniente para el actor. Desde el ataque de unos fanáticos de Trump llamándole con epítetos racistas el hecho de que se fuera a comprar un sándwich a las 2 de la mañana en una de las noches más frías de Chicago, que después de meterle la paliza vertiese energía sobre él y le atase una soga al cuello, con la cual se fue a casa y no se la quitó hasta que se lo pidió la policía al llegar a su vivienda. Debido a todo esto, la situación era muy sospechosa y la policía empezó pronto a investigar al propio Smulet. Y poco tiempo después, llegaron a la conclusión de que Jesse orquestró el ataque contrataron a dos hermanos nigerianos para que la agrediesen. Dichos hermanos se pusieron en contra del actor, exponiéndolo públicamente. 
that was very important for him because he said, hey, don't just beat my ass. Make it look like I'm fighting back and whatnot. So we did that. And then I threw him to the ground. And while after I threw him to the ground, I he had no bruise. I wanted it to look more real. En febrero de ese mismo año, tan solo un mes después de fingir el ataque, Smullett fue demandado por el estado de Chicago. Se le acusaba de cometer varios delitos de desorden público, además de también delitos por proporcionar declaraciones policiales falsas. Las demandas hacia el actor tomaron su tiempo, hasta que tres años más tarde, en marzo de 2022, Jesse fue condenado a pasar 150 días en prisión y además debía cumplir dos años y medio en libertad condicional. El actor, lejos de admitir sus errores y pedir disculpas, seguía negando su culpa. Con dichas declaraciones, Mullet quería desviar la atención y crear un paralelismo con el caso de Jeffrey Epstein. Querían decir que si aparecía muerto, habría sido asesinado. Obviamente, nada de esto acabaría sucediendo, y a lo largo del tiempo, Jesse mantendría la misma versión negando lo sucedido y tachando de racistas a personas que no le creen. Obviamente en el mundo, en especial en Estados Unidos, existen personas racistas y que un ataque de este estilo pueda pasar es plausible. El hecho de que Smullet se inventase algo así es lamentable. No solo por el ridículo que ha estado haciendo a lo largo de estos años, sino también por la crispación que pudo generar con algo así, teniendo en cuenta la tensión racial que ha sido presente en Estados Unidos en los últimos tiempos. Dejadme vuestra opinión en los comentarios, dale a me gusta, compartid el vídeo y suscribiros al canal. Nos vemos en la próxima.